Okay, so um, again, Denise, I'm so glad you're here and that you've been plugging in. And as I said, Grace is going to be joining us with audio only because she is driving. And I'm going to recap what we talked about last week uh, for you and anybody else that may be watching this recording. Go back to last week. It was a really good call. And I will recap, success starts the night before. You want to plan whatever you can the night before. My son just got his first full-time job. Yes. He's got to, it's exciting. He's got to be there at 6 a.m. And success starts the night before. It's going to be very helpful for him to have his lunch packed and his clothes laid out rather than getting up groggy and be like, okay, I need to do this. I'm on my way out the door. Oh, wait a minute. Did it... You know, that's a, and it's a huge time saver, obviously. Um, I actually vividly remember a friend of mine from high school. Her name was Lisa Kuhnley. And she was an artist. She always laid her clothes out the night before. And I was like, why would you ever do that? How do you know what you're going to be in the mood to wear? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but she was brilliant. And, and those things are helpful. Another thing we talked about, because time is money. Money is time. Money is a mm -hmm. reflection of hours that you've spent working most of the time. Now, advanced money management is when you have money coming in that you're no longer working for. Mm -hmm. So that could be, you know, royalties. It could be um, a stock that's on a dividend reinvestment program. Uh, there are uh, if, if you're in real estate and maybe you have a property and you decide to be the mortgage holder, you're going to be getting money coming in for 30 years. Um, so, but for the most part, money and time are interrelated. And I talked about a woman that inherited $86,400. Somebody stole a hundred bucks. And she was like, I'm going to get them. She got a lawyer. You know, she spent twenty or $30,000 to go after that $100 that somebody stole. Is that really worth it? Well, no. <laughs> but do we ever do that with our time? All right, Grace yes. is coming in. Hey, Grace, I know you're on the road. I'm just recapping last, uh, last week, um, 86 thousand four hundred dollars the woman in, inherited it someone stole a hundred bucks she spent tens of thousands of dollars for a lawyer to get that hundred dollars back of course we say that's ridiculous but do we do that with our time do we ever hold a grudge do mm. we ever think i can't believe that person did that to me and do we waste moments seconds of our lives dwelling over a situation that we don't have control over that we're never going to get back so yes. we've got 86,400 seconds given to us every day so that that is that is the recap from last week and i fully admitted last week i struggle with that and it really comes down to forgiveness. And forgiveness is a huge key for success in every area of your life. Doesn't mean that you say whatever somebody did against you was right. But forgiveness frees you. And it is, it is really a key. You don't want to spend tens of thousands of seconds towards something that's not going to give your life peace and success and beauty, so. May I interject? Absolutely. 
because I was just reading this, I think it was yesterday, as believers too, we're called to forgive, and it jumped out on the page out of the page to me that the way we forgive others is the way the Father in heaven will forgive us. That just stopped me dead in my tracks. And I know it, and I've read it before. But when I read it for some reason, you know, yesterday or today, I forget when it was, that, that just stood out to me. So we want to forgive because it's it's not like you say, condoning maybe something that somebody did or said, but it's to release ourselves, but it's also because we're called to do it and that's how we're going to be forgiven. I, I just, I was blown away by that. that. That's awesome. And, and it, it's powerful, but it is a struggle, I think, for many people. Oh, um, absolutely. And just a few more notes on, on forgiveness. I've found in my personal life that I thought I forgave somebody and then that memory pops up and I'm like, Arr. and then I'm like, oh, shoot, I need to free. I thought I forgave him. I'm going to forgive again. So sometimes it's a process. It's not, oh, I forgave him. It's okay if it's a process and forgiveness does not mean that you condone an action against yourself. It doesn't mean what somebody else did was right. And for me, that, that was, that was huge as well. Um, so <clears throat> definitely a process, but if we're given $86,400, <laughs> we don't need to be spending tens of thousands of dollars to get back a hundred bucks that yeah. somebody stole from us. Let's not give away any more of our time. Um, so I'm going to move on to some other thoughts that, that are new that I've been thinking about regarding time and time and money and money is time and they're 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 so interrelated we exchange our time for money um but time is more valuable than money because once it's gone it's gone we can't make more time during the day but we can make more money we can't replace time that was lost, but we can still earn more money. Uh, and as, as you brought up the Bible, I it reminded of Job who lost everything. Mm -hmm. He lost all of his wealth, all of his money. He lost his children. He did keep a nagging wife though. Um, <laughs> Uh, that's a whole other lesson. But in the end, he went through this and we all go through storms in life, but God gave him back a hundred times more than he lost. Mm -hmm. He still didn't get his time back, but he received a hundred times more in wealth <clears throat> in in whatever he lost. So again, time is so valuable. And when we go through those storms, are they wasted? Is time really wasted? I don't believe it is if we can grasp a lesson from that. Mm. So when I look at Job, I'm like, shoot, all that wasted time. Well, he grew closer to God. He learned some valuable lessons that are actually passed on today. Um, so I'm going to give you another mind shift about money and time. And we've talked about a few books. People are always recommending books. I love books. I feel like in today's day and age, we've created a culture that's no longer a, a culture of reading. Mm -hmm. We're more a culture of scrolling, looking at TikTok. You know, our attention span has has waned we're entertaining ourselves to death mm -hmm. but um i mentioned somebody recommended a book to me called um plan your work and work your plan there's two books out there they're very short 
I don't know which one's better. I can't remember who suggested those books to me. But again, there's the concept of plan your work, which implies time. Mm -hmm. That and then work your plan. So you plan the time and you work it. I think that we all do that with, let's say, a dental appointment or a yearly doctor's appointment. But sometimes we neglect to plan <laughs> things for our own selves. I mean, what is life really about? Mm. Is it about just working and gathering the money? Mm. It's a part of life. And where we're living today, I mean, we... We need to pay, <laughs> you know, we, we go to the grocery store. They're not going to give it to us for free. Uh, so, but is that, is life about money or is life about freedom mm. and having money as our servant will give us freedom, having money. Uh, we don't want to be a slave to it. And again, Denise, I love how you're no longer a slave. To your credit card you are now the master and you are in charge yes i'm happy about that <laughs> <laughs> and all right so what i wanted to get to about reading Mom, if <laughs> sorry it's okay um if we want to I really applaud you, Denise, and you, Grace, and everybody that's listening, that you are taking time out of your schedule. You could be watching a movie. You could be scrolling on Facebook. Um, you're here to do something better with your lives. You're here to improve it. You're here to find that, that freedom. God designed us for greater things. Uh, and I really believe that that reading is something that our culture needs to get back to. So I'm going to talk a little bit about a book called Robinson Crusoe. Mm. I don't know if you've read it, Grace. I don't know if you can put in the chat. Have you heard of it? Have you read it? Oh, yes, I've, I've heard of it. Uh, okay. I, I don't think I've read it. If I did, it was a long time ago. Okay. This is a powerful, powerful book with many life lessons and definitely a, a spiritual backdrop. <clears throat> and I have, I have a bunch of tabs <laughs> and notes. So I'm going to give you Gosh, there's so much wisdom in, in this book. I believe it was written by um, a pastor back in the 1800s. It's an older book. Robinson Crusoe ended up being stranded on an island by himself. Mm. Nobody on the island at all. Um, at And there were cannibals that were not too far away that would sometimes visit the island. Okay. So this is a crazy, crazy situation. And at some point, uh, one of the one of the cannibals um, got to be friends with with Robinson. Um, he was either a cannibal or he was somebody captured by the cannibals and uh, his name was Friday. Now there's a, there's a joke is how did Robinson Crusoe get so much done? Because he got everything done by Friday. <laughs> okay. So I didn't, under <laughs> <laughs> I didn't understand that till I read the book, but when he was, he was on the island for years. Years. I don't know if it was 18 years that he was stranded on the island before he got rescued. And he didn't need money. There mm. was, he had, and before he got stranded on the island, he wanted money. He had a focus for money, not for spiritual things. 
he got stranded on the island and there was nothing to buy. There were no stores. His money was worthless. He had to find a way to survive. And after a while, of course, he wanted to get off the island. He made a boat and something happened to the boat and it was destroyed and he had lived there. And he was like, well, am I going to build another canoe or not? What's that going to cost me? It's going to cost me two years. Mm. Like he looked at what things were going to cost him in terms of time instead of money. And I thought that was really powerful. So if you want a, a good book, a, a book full of spiritual wisdom, financial wisdom, in an amazing story, it's Daniel Defoe, Robinson Crusoe. Just talking about it makes me want to read it again. But let's think of things in time in, in that term. Let's suppose somebody's making $20 an hour. All right, that's more than minimum wage. That's about $41,600 a year. Let's suppose they make $20 an hour. Maybe they want to buy a new car. You know, maybe they're a young person, maybe they're driving to work on their bike, they want a car. Who doesn't want a car? Maybe they can't afford a brand new car. Maybe they're not going to do payments because they've taken the war on debt classes. <laughs> and they're saving up money for a good used car. They found one, let's say for $20,000, tax tag title, all included, first year's insurance, $20,000. What is that going to cost the person? It's going to cost them at $20 an hour. It's going to cost them almost a thousand hours. That's 25 weeks in a regular 40 hour work week. That's six months. Wow. So if this person is saying, I want a new car and that car is going to cost me six months of my life. Is it worth it? They might say yes, or they might say, you know, I'm only willing to give up three months of my life to have a car. I need a car. Maybe I don't need the car that's going to cost me six months of my life. Uh, let's talk about a home. Now, the real estate market varies greatly depending on where you are. And Denise, I know you're in real estate. Let's suppose somebody wants to buy a home for $200,000. And they're, they're saving up. Maybe they don't want to do payments because once you get a mortgage, you're essentially paying double for a home mm -hmm. after with a regular 30-year mortgage with all of the interest. Uh, but let's say they, they want to buy a home outright, $200,000. That home's going to cost them five years of their life. Five years of their life if they save up that 200000 Is it worth it? Well, we need a place to live. If we live for 90 years, <laughs> five years of our life, maybe that's not so bad. Now, if you get a mortgage on that $200,000 home, it's going to cost you 10 years of your life. Yep. 10 years of your life if you add that 30-year mortgage on. Now, if people start looking at it that way, we might change some of our financial decisions. I'll be honest, I had no idea about this when we purchased our home. <laughs> I would have definitely made some changes if I looked at it that way. Um, how about dinner? Maybe a dinner for two, going out, husband and wife, having a date night. Maybe it's going to cost you $100 for dinner. That's five hours out of your life. And maybe that's not bad. Maybe you're like, goodness gracious, if I've got to prepare the food, <laughs> set it up, do all the cleanup, do the shopping, maybe, you know, five hours of my life, um, 
that's that's worth it. <laughs> but again, it is definitely just a different shift in your mind to look at what things cost you mm -hmm. in terms of time. Now, I had a when I was working in California, I was young. I had a I had a job in the industry, in the movie industry, in the tech side of things. And it was it was a great job. And there was the opportunity for overtime. Now I did not like doing laundry. And I calculated that if I just stayed once a week for one hour of overtime, I could drop my laundry off once a week and it would get paid for. Because it certainly took me more than an hour to do all of my laundry. Right. And I was like, this is good. <laughs> this is good. I'll be at work for an hour. That's going to cover the cost of my laundry, which takes more than an hour. So in that case, um, that was, I thought it was brilliant on my part, but sometimes it's hard to find some of those deals. But here's the thing. Think about what things cost you in terms of time and is it worth it it might be worth it it might not but again uh, it's just a strategy to look at it's just a strategy to look at um, and the final thing for tonight as we're talking about what is worth your time I'd like you to consider everybody that's on the call and anybody that's watching in the future, what is your priority in life? You don't need to, you know, you don't need to put it in the chat or you don't need to tell me, but think about you have this life. Some of us are halfway done with our lives. <laughs> um, what, have, what have we done with it? What is our priority? Are we missing out on our priority? And it can be different for each person. A lot of people that are faith-based people, you know, God is, is their priority, that relationship with God, mm -hmm. which will be eternal and outside of time. That could be your priority in life to build that relationship. Um, priority, it might be a mission that you have. Maybe you have a mission to help children, um, you know, maybe that's your priority in life. Uh, teachers are amazing and undervalued yeah. in this yeah. country. So maybe, you know, those, you know, maybe there's somebody that's my priority to impact the next generation. So think about what your priority is in life mm -hmm. and have you put that on the calendar. I know that I put my dental appointments on the, I don't even put a dental appointment on the calendar. I just go in and they're like, here's your six month visit. They just tell me when it is. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'll see you in six months. There it is. And I don't think about it. It's on the calendar. I don't miss it. But is my life purpose more important than a dental appointment? And if it is, why haven't I put it on the calendar? What is going to help me in that priority? And maybe it's just something of a self-reflective time. Maybe somebody needs to put on the calendar. I'm going to have a massage once a month. I just need that downtime to refresh me so that I can go after my mission in life. Maybe it's I really need a five-minute prayer and meditation time when I first wake up to connect with my priority in life. I, I don't know what it is for you, but think about your priority in life and what peace is going to move you along towards that and put it on the calendar. And the second thing to put on the calendar is what area right now needs improvement in my life? 
and how can I put time on the calendar to work on that? So think about that area that needs to improve and put some time on the calendar to work on that area. So I'm gonna give you some examples of life areas. There's God, there's spirituality, there's self-care, and that could be mental self-care, it could be losing weight, it could be eating better. If you have a significant other, another life area is your relationships with your spouse or your marriage. Another area of life could be relationships with your children. Another area of life could be money management. Another area could be career, which is different from money management. Career is making the money. <laughs> and then money management is, is how you're taking care of it. It could be a job. Maybe they're somebody that is young and they're going to school. They don't have a job yet. School or education could be a priority or a job just to get by while you develop a path to the career you really want. Um, so those are just examples of life areas. And what is your priority in life? Figure out a way to make an appointment with yourself. <laughs> and next, figure out that area that needs to improve and make another appointment to spend some time on, hey, what am I going to do to improve this area? And um, finally, I know there are some people that really want time management help, and I do as well. Uh, so Time Secrets is a course that's available on the website. Uh, it's, you know, once you purchase that course, it's yours forever and you can go back to it and back to it because I don't get things on the first go around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I need repetition. Uh, some people have also purchased Life Map, which is just a $29 a month subscription, but that is really where you can pick any of those areas out of your life and you get a little course on how to help that area, whether it's business or finances or relationships. And also time secrets as well. There's a lot with time management there, but their videos and their workbooks in short little five, eight, 10 minute increments. So that is what I have for you tonight. So any, uh, any feedback? Does this help move you forward in any way? Um, yes, for me. Um, thank you again for doing this. I appreciate it. And you taking the time out of your life. And I'm sure you're busy scheduled to do it, to, you know, to help, you know, people like myself. So thank you. Um, I just like how you're at least making me refocus. Like you said, what's the, what are your, pri what's your priority or priorities? And to put them on the calendar, my apologies. Okay, that's just never gonna, it's not shutting off. <laughs> but to put it on the calendar and um, I'm, I'm getting better at that. I'm not, I don't have that down. So it's just a reminder for me. And also I, I really like what you said about putting, you know, what area needs improvement. So I'm thinking my husband and I never have time together. So I need to put that on the calendar, even if it's just a plain pickleball together, you know, um, but improvement, I, I am, there's something I've always wanted to do and it also will improve myself and um, possibly my business, but it's something I like. Linda spoke about playing. So it, it ticks off a few boxes for me and I'm scheduling that. So I, I thank you for the, Reminder, someone, Grace just wrote, yay, pickleball. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we lived closer to play it. But um, yeah, to get back and have some fun and, and find out what your priorities are. And, you know, we want to self-improve. We want to grow. I want to honor God. And, you know, so you're just reminding me to uh, put it on my calendar. And someone, I think in Destiny Global had spoken about 
uh, I think it was Carmen doing the colored pencils. Mm-hmm. And I got them and I did it and I stop and I start. And But I think it's really good to kind of encapsulate times and stick to it because I'll jump around from thing to thing, especially working from home. Right. So um, thank you for this, you know, session reminder. You, you are welcome. And again, all those little things that suck away our time. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, once you get those, those big rocks in place and you schedule mm-hmm. that, you know, that pickleball date with your husband and, you know, the other priority of just play, you're not losing anything. <laughs> You've got a right. commitment, just like a dentist appointment. And the only thing you're going to be losing is probably the extra things that we all waste. Right. right. I think we're all guilty of. Um, so Grace, Grace wrote, um, Brad said his. Oh, oh, good, good. Go ahead. No, I saw time sucking vampires. Oh, <laughs> that's what I saw. <laughs> I didn't see the other one about. Oh, Brad. okay, that's Monique. Monique, time sucking vampires. Yes, oh, Monique. yes. Okay, sorry, Monique. Um, yes, so, Monique. So Grace said, Brad said his priority is living a peaceful life. Mm. So, um, so as a amazing marriage and partnership that that you have grace that you and brad have um now we need to define the terms what does living a peaceful life mean to brad and grace that might be you know your your thing is what does that mean to him and how can you put something on the calendar so he can have those bits of peaceful life because life is not always peaceful (laughs) we live here on planet earth but we can still you know we can still move in that direction so that that is amazing and monique my beautiful amazing friend i'm so glad you're here and i don't know if you caught the last little bit okay grace said a good question to talk to him about on our next date yeah find out what it means to have a peaceful life to him it's different for everybody and brad is an amazing disciplined person who is an incredibly hard worker he is a professional agriculturist he's a he's a farmer and in in season like you're not you're not sleeping <laughs> you know, you, you know, when it's time to harvest, then that's, you know, you're, you're not, you're not taking a break from what my understanding is, Grace. You know, when it's time to harvest, when the crops are ready, you got to pick them or you, you know, you're losing, you're losing money. Um, so that, that is it. So Monique, I don't know if you caught anything. Okay. Grace says true. All right, I keep going back and forth between the chat and between Monique. Um, so our action steps, Monique, just to refresh, is we're picking a priority in life. What is our number one priority in life? Why are we here? Why are you here? Every person's going to have slightly different answer to that. And are you putting it on the calendar time to honor that priority? And then number two, the second thing to put on the calendar is what area do you want to improve in? Whether it's God, yourself, losing weight, eating better, moving forward in your career, managing your money better, fun, adventure, play. You know, that's mm-hmm. another life area that, that Denise had, had mentioned she's going to put on the calendar. So what area needs to improve? What area is lagging behind and put something on the calendar to reflect on that and take care of that area. So we are, okay, so I guess we're good. We're good, thank you very much. I don't know what's in the chat, but I'm excited to go color uh, my calendar (laughs) based on priority. Very good, very good. And and remember mm-hmm. white space, you know, you don't want to have your calendar crammed full. Right. Um, 
And I'll pick a color for me. They said to pick a color for yourself and, and, you know, just create that space and and guard that as well (laughs) for your sanity. Awesome. Very, very good. Very good. Monique, is there anything you want to say? Just say hello so I can hear your lovely voice. Hello. (laughs) Hey, Monique. Hi, ladies. Grace, Denise, Larissa, great to see you guys. Um, yeah, I just jumped off of the other coaching call and I was like, oh my gosh, I need to get over. I wonder if it's still going on. Mm-hmm. Um, thank you for those action steps. Um, it's definitely good to hear them again. I'm literally staring at my big <laughs> calendar that I have on my wall. That's like five foot wide. So I cannot miss that thing with empty oh, boxes. Wow. I need to color code and fill in so I can see at a glance and recognize where my white space is, where my free time is, and where there's not enough fun on my calendar. Mm -hmm. Um, So I have some ideas in my mind as to some things I want to work on, but I'm realizing I might need to take things off of my schedule that I was planning to put on it, Mm. because the winter months are a bit challenging for me. So I don't want to put too much in there, because I think I'll need more rest than... Mm -hmm. I may want because <laughs> there's things I want to get done. Um, but I'm I'm realizing that I need to have more of that. So now I'm just kind of going through my mind of okay, what is going to make it onto the calendar? And what am I just gonna say, you know what, not right now. Mm-hmm. Maybe later on this year or maybe next year, but just not right now. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm looking at right now. I'm looking at those very empty boxes on that calendar. <laughs> fill in it's haunting me so that's something I will be working on um and yeah coming up with a big huge scary goal (laughs) that I know it'll take a lot of discipline to accomplish it something I think might be a great challenge for me that I never thought in a million years I would even dream of doing because people who do those things are crazy but here I am going after some big hairy scary thing now I want to know, know what it is when you're you. ready to share. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be cheering you on no matter what it is. Even yeah. if I Thank don't you. Know. Thank you. But I decided that I need to pick a goal in an area that is not my area of natural strength. Mm. Because mm. I can pick other goals that, you know, I'm not going to say they're easy, but they may be are not as big of a jump up because I have some background in it but going for something in like the bit of an opposite direction where I really have to overcome a lot of my fears along the way because Mm -hmm. you know doing certain kind of things um more adventure for sure is on my list and more fun I need to schedule more spontaneous fun (laughs) so I'm Going yeah, and, you, and you can, that. you can schedule spontaneous fun. People, <laughs> going to schedule People don't and think you can, but it's I'm possible. going to schedule it and say, do something fun. And I will schedule block off the time and I will research and find something fun I can do um, during that time to make sure fun. Otherwise fun doesn't happen. So I need to be deliberate with that. So thank you. This has been very helpful. Just catching the last bit of it so I can refocus and start filling in those very empty boxes on that calendar. Nice. I love that. Right Thank you. Um, and there's a saying, you're only as strong as your weakest link. So for mm. you to take the area that you're weak in, it's going to raise your level mm. up in every area. Uh, now, Denise mentioned the color coding. And I just, for anybody that might be viewing that has no idea what the heck that means, um, I'm going to show you an, a, a sample Ooh, you're good. color coding for a week and um i have god my spouse my son work so those were my main things and this one um it is in time secrets but i got this one from life map um ruling your time so i know um grace and monique i think you have life map that's that's a great refresher, ruling your time. Uh, which I've I've had to sit down and do it with my family. They've been willing to do it. And 
it's definitely a work in progress. I'm not going to say I have it nailed. That is definitely my weak link. I'll admit to you guys. <laughs> but I keep working at it and it is getting better. And one note that I wrote at the bottom of that calendar is be faithful with what God has given you and he'll multiply your time. 1% better every day. Yes, Monique. Um, so again, be faithful with what you have and God will sometimes will multiply it. I don't know how he does that. We just talked about Job earlier and he lost everything, but then God gave him back a hundred times more than he lost. God multiplies things. In the Bible, the sun stopped in the middle of the day during one of the great battles and they were able to continue fighting. So, uh, and it's not about perfection. It's just about progress every little 1% better every day. 1% better. And you'll be surprised at how far you get. So you guys are amazing. I love you. Thank you for calling me higher. Thank you for being here. Everything that you do and that you apply, I get inspired by each of you. So thank you. Thank you for that. That totally inspires me. And be post, post any victories you have, even if they're tiny, <laughs> you know, okay. I saved an extra 50 cents today and I, and I put it towards my wealth account. Woo, 50 cents. I'll jump up and down for that. Every, no amount is too small. So you guys are amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Have a right. blessed week. You too. I will see you next week. Feel free to post. And if you need me for anything, you know how to reach me. Thank, Thank you. you. So Take care. Good night, ladies. Bye. Good night. Thank Good night, Grace. Bye. Bye, Monique. Bye, Denise.